All right, class, we're going over a few answers here to this P17 oscillations. Um, so first of all, which of the following statements about the Springbok oscillator and simple harmonic motion about equilibrium points is false? Okay, so they're talking about directions of acceleration and um, equilibrium points. So that's why we had this lab. If you have these turned on, um, you can see that at certain points, my velocity keeps going forward, my acceleration keeps pointing towards equilibrium. My velocity only turns when I hit the end of the kind of the crest of the wavelength here. And then my velocity will keep pointing in one direction until it meets the trough or the next crest. Okay, um, so that means um, the acceleration of velocity always point in the same direction, not true. Okay, so the first answer is B. All right, the next question, which of the following are most likely to result in simple harmonic motion? Select two answers. All right, so a hole is drilled through the one end of a stick, which is hung on a frictionless axle. The bottom of the meter stick is displaced 12 degrees and released. Um, yes, so this is a simple harmonic oscillator. You're just, you're using the mass of the stick as your pendulum and you're creating a pendulum simple harmonic oscillator. Drilled through one end, around vertically, the bottom of the stick is displaced 12 degrees at least. Every time it swings back and forth, the axle squeaks, okay? That is a good sign of friction and dampening, and it's no longer simple harmonic motion. All right, so not B. C, a block is hung vertically um, from a linear spring. It's the opposite end is attached from a stationary point. The entire apparatus is placed in deep space. Hey, we don't even have any gravity. Uh, the block is displaced four centimeters from equilibrium and released. So no dampening, no gravity, it has this nice simple harmonic motion. So yes, true. Um, we're, this is the AP exam, you just skip it and you keep going. Um, we don't have to read D, but let's read D because this is practice. Um, a block is placed on a frictionless surface, that's a good sign, um, but it's a non-linear spring. Okay, the opposite end of the spring is attached to the wall all right, it's this nonlinear part that's throwing off the simple harmonic motion oscillation. All right, so A and C are the correct answers. All right, number three, a spring with constant K is hung vertically from a surface and the mass uh, M is attached to it. Derive an expression. This is kind of a strong word here for the equilibrium position at the mass. So they kind of tell us that it's going to be why not? It's going to be equilibrium, but how can we get that as an expression? So let's do a force diagram to figure that out. Okay. Okay. So now here we have our diagram. We have the force of gravity going down, and we have the force of the spring. Okay, so keep it this color here. Um, the force of the spring is going to equal kx. But they said equilibrium. So now the force of the spring is going to equal k times y naught. Okay, because that's equilibrium. Okay, so now in our expression, if it's at equilibrium, then this force is going to equal that force. Okay. So now we can say KY naught equals force times gravity. And if we want an equilibrium expression, that's gonna be our equilibrium expression. All right, so now we have a spring pulled down to point A, drive expression for the potential spring energy stored, okay. Um, so now we can just know potential is one half kx squared, but they said it's pulled down to point A. So now we can just use 
Okay, so again, they're using the word derived kind of um, superficially, but that is what they're referring to here. Okay, um, let's keep going. All right, uh, next up, at time zero, the spring was released, derive an expression for the period of the spring block oscillator. So again, they're using the word derived here um, rather superficially. So we're just going to equal two pi square root of m over k. Okay, so they gave us these points and that's how we can derive it. Okay, so part D, describe the experimental procedure you would use to verify your derivation of a period, include all equipment included or required. Okay, so hopefully this is sounding a lot like the lab we've done. So we're gonna, um, only with spring. So you're gonna get a spring, uh, you're gonna get a mass, you're going to um, get like a stopwatch or a phone, and you're gonna set it up to start oscillating. Um, and then you're going to measure the, the displacement, the time, the frequency, uh, plot it all out, and you could get there. Um, you could also uh, say you're going to use some uh, video equipment or some sensors. Uh, those would all be allowed on an AP style test as well. And how would you analyze your data to determine whether the experiment verifies your derivation? Again, you could start plugging your points into the equation or start graphing it and say, this is the graph my equation predicts, and these are my plot points, you know, kind of a box and whiskers type thing. Um, or you could do, a, a, your equation would give you a data point and then your um, experimental data would see if that point matches up and you get a percent error here, okay? Um, all right. Number four, horizontal spring. Plot, draw a feed by diagram. Okay, determine the period of the spring block oscillator and determine the speed of the block. So notice number three didn't ask for a feed by diagram, but I drew one anyway to help my uh, uh, problem solving. This one explicitly asked for one, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right. So draw a free to body diagram here. So we have our mass and our spring. Okay, so we're gonna have force to gravity, force normal. Um, here we're looking at, does it say a frictionless surface? Yes, it does say frictionless. We're not gonna worry about friction, which means this, these two should cancel out. And then we'll have uh, force of the spring moving back and forth. Okay, there's our free body diagram. Determine the period of the spring block oscillator is the next one. Okay, um, so again, T equals two pi square root of M over K. Okay, um, we take the numbers that were given in the question of two pi square root of 0 0.25 kilograms all over K, which was 40. And that gets us our answer here of about 0 0.5 or 0 0.497 seconds. Okay. Um, all right, uh, part C, determine the speed of the block at position x equals zero, okay? So that means it's at equilibrium, okay? So x equals zero was equilibrium. Remember we had uh, 15 centimeters this way and 15 centimeters this way. Um, I wanna point out, if you have a force diagram, okay? You had force normal, force of gravity, force the spring. The AP test says draw a force diagram. Do that and don't do any other sketches on this. This is your answer to part A. Leave it untouched. Do a separate drawing for these other parts if you need to do some problem solving um, on the diagram. All right. 
So what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the speed of the pollution at blocks C. So we can set kinetic energy. All right, so this is by the way, A, B, C. Kinetic energy, um, excuse me, um, spring energy equal to kinetic energy, okay? Um, and then we can plug in all the numbers. So we had one, well, of course the one halves are gonna cancel. 40 X squared equals one half. Um, 0 0.25 times um, V squared, We're trying to find velocity we know is at, um, what they say, at 15 centimeters, right? So one half, 40, one five squared, okay? Um, so that's how much energy it's going to pick up at the far end of the spring. That's how much energy it's going to carry into the uh, motion. Okay, so when the spring is all the way stretched out, all the energy is over here. When the spring is back to center, all the energy is going to be in kinetic. And then it stretches out again and it shifts back to the spring. And that shifts back to center and the energy swings back there which is why we get these simple harmonic oscillators as we go from peak spring energy, and then it's gonna be an opposite type thing, peak kinetic energy, okay? Um, which I believe we're gonna see here in a second. All right. Um, so we have the position, we have the expression for displacement as, oh, I haven't done the expression for displacement here. Okay, um, so uh, D is going to equal um, whatever your amplitude is times the cosine of um, omega T. Okay, so you have to take your angular velocity times time. Uh, should we find the angular velocity already? How do I know angular velocity? All right, and we can go ahead and solve for uh, angular velocity. So we had two pi. I kept thinking we were trying to find, we needed frequency, but we also have period. So we can do one over period uh, to find frequency. Take that over two pi, and then we can plug in the numbers um, so that we get um, the numbers we're looking for here. Amplitude, remember this goes back and forth, 15, 0 0.15. Cosine, this gives a number close to 12.6 times T. Okay, all right. Um, and then they're asking graphing type questions. Um, on a graph below, plot the displacement of speed and acceleration as a function of time. Um, I think we've seen those before. Um, so if we're starting with the spring pulled back, it's gonna look something like this. So this is X versus T, okay? Um, those of you who um, know the derivatives, so B versus T, it's gonna look like this. Okay, and then acceleration versus time um, should look like that. So it's kind of a first derivative, second derivative type thing. Okay, and then they want one more. So that was E, F, um, plot the kinetic energy and the spring potential energy. Okay. Um, I think spring potential is easiest to draw because it's going to look just like this. Okay, so uh, U for the spring versus time, it's going to look just like that. Okay, and then whatever my kinetic energy is has to be the opposite of this. Okay, 
Um, and in reality, you'd like this would be um, that zero uh, joules there. Okay. All right. Um, that takes us through number four. And the one people are asking about number five here, let me get a new piece of paper and we'll keep going. All right, so we're looking at number five, part A. As you plot out the points, what we should see is a curve, okay? As we plot L versus T, okay? And then on the second one, on part B, um, as we look at that one, now we can start looking at, well, what happens if we square things? All right, what happens if we do L versus T squared? Okay, um, then we start getting into, where my ruler went. Um, hopefully we get something that looks more like this. Okay, and then Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of the, let's take one question at a time here. All right, so this, that answered part A and part B. Um, part C, uh, describe the experimental procedure students could describe the experimental procedure that students could use to collect the data necessary to act as accurately as possible, okay? So, um, we're discussing this. Um, the idea is uh, pretty close to your experiments that you've done, okay? So um, you're gonna have something swing back and forth. You're gonna uh, collect distances and times. Um, you're trying to get the center of mass as accurately measured that length as possible. And you're gonna try to measure time as accurately as possible. You can talk about using cameras, cell phones, sensors, all those things are reasonable. And I just want to stress, this is the kind of question that can show up on the AP exam. That's why we do labs, that's why we do lab reports. Um, that's why it shows up on these practice problems, okay? All right, um, and hopefully you have it in your lab report. We don't have to go over it here. Next one, in order to determine the acceleration of the student's graph T versus the square root of L, which looks a lot like L versus T squared, okay? Using the graph, calculate the acceleration due to gravity, okay? So again, they're gonna do the same kind of thing. They have uh, T versus square root of L, and they have that straight line, okay? We can do a few different things here. Um, remember the equation you're gonna be using. Um, hold on. Let me make sure I have the right question written down here before we go on. Um, so this is part D, okay. Um, so we can use a number of different equations, but um, we can use um, T equals two pi square root of L over G, okay? And then you're solving for G. So G is gonna equal four pi squared all over, um, where am I at here? T and that is uh, L. Okay, but T over L, notice that four pi squared T over L, rise over run, that is the slope. Okay, the slope, four pi squared over the slope will give us G. Okay, we could also find two points and solve for that. Seems like that would have been just as effective. Okay, this gives us another way to solve it. All right, um, let's move on here. Okay, um, 
with did we get everything? All right. Um, that was D E following following further analysis and experimentations and comparison of students' experimental values and acceleration uh, offer a reasonable explanation for the differences. So said this in class, there's a number of reasons things can go wrong. Um, we assumed, where was it? Oh, I, didn't, I don't think I drew one out for this. We assumed a massless spring. Springs are never massless, okay? Um, the friction, the masses, the um, where you measured it from, the frame rate, all those things could have uh, played a difference. All right, um, and that should take us through the questions we had. All right, so um, that takes us through the, all the questions we're asked. Um, and like you see here, there was an answer key. So hopefully this with explanation helps. And with that, have a good day.